We've been looking, we just finished up last week the judgments, the, the last seven vials, not last week, last time we were together, the last seven vials of, of wrath and of judgment. And something that I've been saying over and over and over again is that all these vials, all these judgments, all the wickedness of the world was, was bringing forth the, the, the soon-to-be second coming of Jesus Christ. And everything that we've talked about, I mean the vials, the judgments, uh, the, the, the wickedness of man, uh, uh, the, the wickedness of the enemy, the deceitfulness of him, the, the battle of Armageddon, and all these things have been leading up to this moment. It, it, this, is, this is the climax that we've been waiting for. Uh, I think I think this is this is what we as Christians have been waiting for today, and I, and I think of of the tribulation saints of all that they've been enduring all in all this time. They've been looking and they've been waiting and they've been anxiously anticipating the second coming of Jesus Christ. And so understand this is that the first co- the second coming will not be like the first coming, right? We know that in the first coming he, he was he came as a baby in a manger. That he was born to the little town of Bethlehem. That, that, that he, he didn't come in, all, in a grandiose way. He didn't come uh, uh, in all his glory and, and with a host of angels. No, he didn't come that way. He came as a uh, meek and lowly and, and, and humble. And he came as a suffering servant, as the Lamb of God. And now he's come back as the King of Kings. And, and it's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. So we're going to be in chapter 19. We left off on chapter 16, and just to go over the chapter 17 and 18, uh, focus more on uh, on Babylon and Babylon being the, the city of, of Rome and the Roman Empire and the empire and, the, and how the Antichrist coming to power. And I, I just didn't feel led to go over uh, it with you. Uh, it's kind of a pause in the narrative, and I encourage us to highly to read it and to you know if you if you have questions. And if I don't have the answer, I can point you to the right direction. But really, I just felt led to just continue in the narrative here. And as we look at the second coming, let's read with me, uh, if you would, Revelation chapter 19. We're going to start reading in chapter number 11. We'll go back to these uh, verses in here in just a, in just a minute. And, and so just, just like I, I talked about before, the battle of Armageddon was underway. That the, the, the Satan had gathered the armies in this, in this, in this uh, region uh, this, the, the Valley of Armageddon, and there was a spike going on, and we, we know that the time of tribulation was a time of war. It was a time of great death, it was a time of war, it was a time of famine, it was a time of all these judgments coming to pass, and, and there was a time of war, and now, and now Satan had gotten to the point uh, where, he had, where, where he had turned the whole nation, the whole world against the Lord. And now we're going to see the, the return of Jesus Christ here. Verse 11 says, and I saw, remember this is, this is the viewpoint of John, and I saw the heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness doth he judge and make war. That is why Jesus is coming right now to deal with the nations. He has come to make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. It's, it's, it's no, we, we don't just get to witness Jesus Christ's return. We will be there with him. And verse 15, And his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the of Almighty God. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw my, uh, and I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken 
and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with, with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And so before we get into, into it, I've titled the message today is simply the, the return of Jesus Christ. The return of Jesus Christ. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I thank you for today, Lord. I thank you for the message this morning, Lord. I, I pray that you continue to speak to us through your word. Lord, I pray this evening that you give me wisdom, Lord. I pray that you open our hearts and our minds and really see uh, the glory that is revealed within you in these scriptures, Lord. Lord, I pray that you, you, you help our hearts to yearn for this day. Lord, I pray that you, you, help, you help us to become more like you. And Lord, I pray that you help us to open up our understanding so that we may know you more, so that we may glorify you more. Lord, we love you and we thank you for all that you've given to us today, Father. Be with us this evening. As we study your word, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. And, and so see, here, here we see the second coming of Jesus Christ. And like I said, everything has been leading up to this moment. And I said before that his first coming will not be like his second coming. Right, right, I, I, think, I think of when Jesus, uh, 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 this uh, Chuck Smith uh, commentator wrote this, this the, the, when Jesus comes again, he will not come on a donkey with meekness and loneliness, but on a white horse with power and glory, not with a few disciples waving palm branches, but with tens of thousands of his saints with him, not to be crowned with, uh, with thorns for a moment, with a royal, but with a royal diadem forever, not to die in shame on a cross, but to reign forever and ever. And so Jesus has now come to set all things right. Everything has led up to this point. I I, th I think of the blasphemies that the, that the that the world that the world has committed. Just the the the, the wickedness of the antichrist and him deceiving the world and, and people blaspheming the name of God and worshiping Satan and worshiping the antichrist and 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 not repenting of their wicked works and the murders and the thievings and the horrors and on all these things Jesus said that enough is enough I am come to make all things right and that is what Jesus Christ is here to do and so us I hope that us as we read these passages as we look forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ, that we see him for who he is, and that our hearts may draw nearer to him and desire this. I mean, we should all be looking forward to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Uh, we know that at this point, as a church, we will be raptured. We will be with him. I think when the Bible says, and so shall ye ever be with the Lord. And so from the point that the church comes up, we will, we will, we will miss the tribulation. We will uh, um, we will not endure this, but ever since, from that moment forth, we will be with Jesus Christ. And that includes when he comes back. And that includes with his coming back. So first I want to look at his countenance. How his, we, we talked about how his second coming is different from his first. And so the Bible points out the way the, the, his appearance, his countenance, how he comes back is significant. The way that he appears. Look at uh, verse number 12. Verse number 12. Verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And, and a white horse. That, that, that's the first thing that we see. So I, I think of a white horse. Horses, somebody riding on a horse uh, is a symbol of somebody going to battle, right? Th that is what Jesus has come to do. He has come to battle. He has come to make war and, and to bring and to bring judgment. And 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 the and we know the white horse symbolizes that Jesus Christ has already won the battle, right? He's already he's already won the battle. He he's already achieved victory. But he 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 hasn't come a, as a baby in a manger. No, he has come on a white horse. And uh, verse uh, verse eleven. And he and I saw heaven opened, and behold, the white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, the one and only Jesus Christ. And in righteousness, there he is. This is what he's come to do in this moment. He has come to both judge and make war. He has come to set right all things that the, that the tribulation and all the wickedness, he's come to make all things right. And, and look at his eyes. 
and his eyes were as a flame of fire. You know, when you look at somebody, the eyes of a person are very telling, right? If somebody is mad at you, a lot of times their eyes can reflect that. If somebody is sad, you see sadness in their eyes. When, when, I, when I think about Jesus coming, and when I, when I think of what he's coming to do, right, the, the eyes are reflect what's going on in a person's heart. And so when, when I think about, when, when I see Jesus and when it describes his eyes, the Bible points out that his eyes were as a flame of fire, right? Uh, th- this would not be a, a simple, uh, uh, he, he, ha- he has come with a, with a very specific mission, right? And, and it, uh, honestly, it, would not, it will not be a pretty sight. And so when the Bible says that his eyes were as flame as fire, you see his righteous anger in his eyes. You see how, how Jesus Christ is the judge of the world, and, and he has come to punish wick, uh, wickedness and punish uh, evildoers. And, and, I, and I think of uh, the saints, how we, we talk about how, uh, how the tribulation period, and especially the great tribulation, the second half, was a period of great spiritual wickedness and of great uh, persecution against the saints. And so Jesus is, 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 is desiring to, to, to execute righteous judgment and to, and to, and to set his people free. That, that, that's what he's come to do. And, and so uh, his, his eyes are very telling of his demeanor. And not only his eyes, look at, it, look at what's on his head. And on his head were many crowns, right? On his head were many crowns. And, and so his crown points to his authority, right? He, he is now king of king and lord of lords. No, no, he, he, his coming is now, it's very clear when you come on a white horse and when you come with a crown, he, you're proclaiming yourself to be king. And he is the one true king of king and lord of lords. And so his crown is symbolizing that, hey, he will now be in charge. Satan is not going to be in charge. The Antichrist is not going to be in charge. The nations of the people of the earth are not going to be in charge anymore. And I praise the Lord for the time comes when we don't longer have to deal with the silliness of the rulers of this world. But when Jesus comes true and just and, and righteous to establish true reign on this earth. And so that, that's what we see with his crown. And not only his crown, and also the Bible says, And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. And, and, and so n- the names of Jesus Christ, the names of God, tells of their character of God. Right? If you see a name, a name means something in the Bible. A name means something in the Bible. And here, I don't know what the name is. Clearly, we don't know. Uh, I hope that one, one day we find out. But there is a name that is, uh, um, what I believe, is describing his character in this moment. And, and it, it says the Bible, the Bible doesn't reveal it to us. But I, I hope, I, I believe, hopefully, that, that we get to know this name. But, and but regardless, we're going to experience him in this moment. And not only that, his clothing, his clothing is, is symbolic of what he's come to do. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Uh, and they're just a, they're, it's, it's unclear whether this is the, 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 his blood that covers a multitude of sin, or this is symbolic of the blood that he was shed of the enemies. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but uh, regardless of it is, is that Jesus Christ, he, he, he is righteous. He is con- we, we know that his blood covers a multitude of sins. And, and we know that Jesus Christ is come to make war. Right, war is not a pretty thing. So I, I tend to lean a little bit more towards the fact that that he, he has come. He's come to shed blood. That he has come to make things right. And so he is. He, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And look at what it says. And his name is called the Word of God. That that that's who he is. That that's who he is. And not only that, not only does he come in such a, a, a fierce and have a, has a fierce countenance with, with eyes of fire and, and a vesture dipped in blood and a crown and, and a white horse, we will be with him. Think about that. We will be with him. We will be on his side. <laughs> Verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven, that's us, that's, that's the angels. The angels come and we come with him. And the, and the armies uh, which were in heaven followed him. And we, we will always be with Jesus Christ. And in heaven, in heaven followed him upon white horses. So we also will be with him. We will be the armies that come together with him. And it says, clothed in fine linen, white 
and clean. And so we will be with him, and the angels will be with him as well. Uh, but understand is I what I see is that we will be more like spec, more uh, we will be more so spectating. It's not I, I don't believe that like we'll be fighting and we'll be you know shedding blood. No no no. Look, because verse fifteen says, and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the, of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And, and so I, I don't believe that this is a literal sword. I, I think well, when, when God came and God uh, created the universe, he created everything by the word of his mouth. And, 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 when, and when Jesus speaks, we know that when Jesus was here on earth, that his word had power. Right? It's not like he had to do a whole incantation, a whole weirdness. No, no. The word of God has power. And so when I see that the sword that comes out of this mouth, I believe that, that that symbolizes that, like 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 the last word says, and his name is called the word of God. And so the word of God has power. And so God uses his word to make all things right on the earth. And his mouth is literally, uh, it, it literally symbolizes the power that he has and the sword that comes out of his mouth to smite the nations and to rule them with a rod of iron. And so his word has power. He does the work. He will conquer. He will rule by the word of his mouth. And so clearly we will rule with him, right? We are, we are joint heirs with the Lord. We have the righteousness of God uh, on, our, on our accounts. We, have, we get the opportunity to witness. We get the opportunity to be there with him. We, we will rejoice when he smites the enemies and when, when he sets free those who are being persecuted. I, I mean, just the, the fierce persecution that is going on in Christians at this time, in saints at this time, that we have no idea. We, we have no clue how fiercely they're being persecuted and how many are killed and so many are, are, are killed and gone into hiding and how Jesus comes and we come with him and we get to partake in all this, right? Isn't that wonderful? He doesn't just do it. He allows us to go with him and partake. Uh, that, that's, that's just amazing. And, and so it, we, he, he is the righteous ruler. Verse 16 when he comes, he says, he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, right? And this is, this is how he comes now. Not as a suffering servant. Not as, not as the, the Lamb of God that will die for the sins of the world. No, no, no. Now he's come as King of kings and Lord of lords to, to set everything the way that he wants it to, right? He gets to be the judge now. He gets to uh, proclaim what is uh, authority and proclaim uh, what he wants to. Right? This will not, like I said before, and it will not be a pretty sight. Verse 17. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. And look what he means. Verse 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and them that sit on them, and the, fle and the flesh of all men, both, both free and bond, both small and great. And, and so the, 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 the people, the armies that have come to gather together against the Lord, this is the fate that will come upon them, is that they will be consumed by Christ, and, and, and even so that an angel comes and tells the birds, saying, hey, go feast on them. Go feast on them. He is the judge. Uh, and so we, we, know, we know this, John chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Right, And this is the time where he, he, he will start being the judge. Uh, and so he will bring down all these armies, and all the and the Antichrist, verse 19. Uh, and he saw the beast and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And, and just by the word of his mouth, that the, 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 the whole nations of the earth stand no chance against the Lord. And, and, and now they are come they, they have come to face to face with Jesus Christ. And they stand no chance. 
They had their time. They made a ruckus. Now it's time to pay, right? And, and that's, that's a reality for everyone, right? There may be a time where you, where, 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 let's say, people blaspheme God. There may be a time where wickedness and evil ensues in the world. But Jesus is going to make things right. That will all come to an end. And here, that comes to an end. The, 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 the seven years, especially these last three and a half years, when men were worshiping the, the devil and worshiping Antichrist and, 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 and uh, doing away with the saints, and I think of how, how they killed the two witnesses and, and persecuted God's people in our, in our constant war with each other, and we just see how the love of man has waxed colder and colder and colder and colder and colder. And now they are come face to face with Jesus Christ. We, they see his armies. They are coming to make war, and they stand no chance. Verse 19, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to, to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And, verse, and, and it says, And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. So the Antichrist and the false prophet who deceived all these people, who deceived the world, Jesus Christ has come to do away with them. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And so they would be cast into the lake of fire. And that's where they would stay. Verse 21. And now the rest of the world, the rest of the, the, the rebellious nations, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. And so what do we see? Is that Jesus brought down the Antichrist. Jesus brought down the false prophet. Jesus brought down the armies that rebelled against him. And, and, and Jesus did all this. And, they, and, then, and the, the nations, they had a chance. They, they, they were told, told time and time again, hey, repent, repent, repent. Jesus is coming. Uh, and, and however the message was spread, it, that, that they had to repent. And time and time again, we saw in Scripture that they repented not of their wicked works, that they repented not of their wicked works, that they blasphemed God. And so now they, now Jesus is coming, and, and now <laughs> that, that's it. This, this is all you get. Uh, and so what we see in the this, in this Scripture is that Jesus has come very differently than his first coming. Right? He has come to rule with a rod of iron. So we see his countenance reflect his character, his fierceness, his righteous anger, his fierceness. How, how he desires to, to bring the children of God with him and how we will be with him to witness and to experience this and to rejoice with the Lord that, that, that he is vanquishing evil. And, and so he comes as a righteous ruler to judge and make war. And the wicked will be slain. And from then on, we will move on we will move on to uh, the, the millennial reign. And, and now we see uh, we will go back to, to, to I believe it was Matthew 25, how God separates the righteousness and unrighteousness and judges them. And, and so he judges the, the, these, these people. He, he, sets, he, he will soon establish his millennial kingdom, and, and soon we will be, see Satan himself bound for a thousand years. And so from now on, this is Jesus Christ is in charge in the scene. Right? From now on, there will be no more... Uh, no more of this, this, this silly Satan worship and, and silly rebellion uh, the way that it was before. Now Jesus has come, and he has come to establish. So what, what do we have to look forward to? We look, we, have to, we look forward to the judgment of the nations. And, and by that, I mean when he, when he separates the righteousness and the unrighteousness, we look forward to the millennial reign. We look forward to the eternal state. And, I mean, the eternal state, that's really what I want to get into. What is heaven going to be like and what we have to look forward to but 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 rejoice is that this is the fate that comes to those who trust in jesus christ that we will be with him forever and then and those who rebel against the lord especially during this tribulation period so so there's a there's a difference so the bible points out the judgment of those in the tribulation period and then the great white throne judgment right jesus deals away with the wickedness of this time first 
and then he deals uh, with the judgment. So, but we have much to look forward to in our study, and I'm glad <laughs> we're here. We're here. We're at the point where, we, where I wanted to get to, but we will rejoice that we will be with him during this time, not only seeing it, but we experience together with him. All right, let's, let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for your righteousness, your judgment. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy. Lord, everything that you are, Lord, we are thankful for it. Lord, we are thankful how, how you are, are willing that, that none should perish, Lord, but that all should come to repentance. Lord, help us to, to seek you and to love you and to desire to know you more, Lord, and help us to uh, be bold in our proclamation and proclaiming the gospel and pro proclaiming the good news. And, and Lord... Help us to view our lives in terms of in, in, in mind of eternity and, and uh, awaiting your second coming. Lord, we look forward to the plan for the ages that you have. We look forward to all the things that will come to pass. Lord, help us to be busy doing the work of the ministry. Lord, help us to be busy uh, doing what it is that you called us to do in our lives. Lord, help us to, uh, when the time comes of the rapture and then the second coming, Lord, help us to be faithful, Lord. Father, we love you and, and we desire to uh, be with you in all eternity. Father, thank you for all that you've done for us. Lord, be with us uh, uh, this week as we go home. Lord, continue to keep us safe. Lord, we love you and we be sure to give you uh, the, the praise and the glory and the honor that is owed to you. Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.